Hello guys and welcome to Python Programming Tutorials by Amul's Academy. So in the previous tutorial we discussed about the insertion sort algorithm. So today we'll write the program for that algorithm. So first in the Python file, I'll define a function, okay, which will do the sorting based on the insertion sort algorithm. And next whenever I want to sort any numbers using that function, then I, I can simply call that. So first to define a function, I'll use def keyword followed by the function name. So here I'll take the function name as insertion sort. And to sort anything, we need a list, right? List of numbers. So I need to take parameter here, a list. So here I'll give the list name as my list. So inside this function body, we need to write the code for the insertion sort algorithm. So we discussed about that algorithm in the previous tutorial, right? So here in this algorithm, we need to take the first element as the sorted part and rest as the unsorted part. And I need to pick the first element of the unsorted part and I need to compare it with the sorted part elements, right? So here initially, whatever the element present in the zeroth index, it will be in the sorted part. And I need to start comparing from here, from the first index, because I need to compare four with 10 first, next 25, next one, next five. So I need to compare the elements present in the unsorted part that is 4, 25, 1, 5 with the sorted part elements. And I need to compare it one at a time. So for that, what I'll do is I'll take for loop in my program because here we are doing the same thing. That is, we are comparing the element present in the unsorted part with the element present in the sorted part. But here elements are different in each time. So that's why I'll take a for loop for that. Initially, I'll take a for loop and here I need to take a variable name, right? You can take any variable name here. I'll take it as index in range. So how many times this for loop need to be executed? So I need to execute it from one to so length of my list. So I'll tell you why. So here we can see first we need to compare four with 10. What is for the value present in the first index, right? We need to begin from here. This will be the first element of unsorted part. So in every list, the first element of a unsorted part will present in the first index of that list. So that's why I took range as from one to length of list. So in the program, I took list name as my list. Length of my list is nothing but total length of this. That is nothing but five. So range will be from one to five. So as we know, this end part will be excluded in the range function. So we'll get one, two, three, four, the index. Okay. One, two, three, four. So that's why I took range like this one to length of my list. Okay. Total length. So next we need to check whether four is less than 10, right? So here we need to take the element of unsorted part one by one, right? So what I'll do is I'll take a variable called current element or current value, which will hold the current element. For example, if I am comparing four with the sorted part elements, then four will be the current element. If I comparing 25 with the sorted part element, then 25 will be the current element. Okay. So we'll compare this unsorted part elements one by one. So that will be stored in this a variable. Okay. I'll take that as current element. So here I need to take a variable, my list of index. So here index will be nothing but one, two, three, four. It will be the index of unsorted part list. Initially index will be one. So my list of one. So current element will be the first element of the unsorted part. So it will point here four will be the current element. After that, 25 will be the current element. Okay. So next we need another variable because here we can see I need to check the current element with the sorted part elements. Okay. And we need index for the sorted part element also, right? So for example, if I want to check 25 with the 10, okay. So that is nothing, but I want this index also to get this value. I need this index. Okay. So for that, 
I'll take another variable. I'll take variable and I'll take it is equal to index. That is nothing but when index will be 1, this will be 1. When index will be 2, it will be 2. Okay, I'll tell you why this is useful. So next, I need to compare the values now. Here in the first step, I need to compare whether 4 is less than 10. So in the second step here, I need to check first 25 is less than 10. Okay. So if it is true, then I need to check whether 25 is less than 4. Here I need to check whether 1 is less than 25. If true, then I check 1 is less than 10. If true, I need to check 1 is less than 4. So here we can see to compare the current element with the sorted part elements, we need a loop. Because here we can see in the sorted part there is only one element. So it will check only once. But here we can see it contains two elements. So it will check twice if it is necessary. It will check thrice here. Okay. It will check four times here. So I need a loop. But here I will take while loop because I have a condition to check here. That is I need to check whether current element is less than the sorted part element. Right. So here I will take while loop. And I will check whether current element is less than the so we usually check the current element with the previous value okay here we can see 4 is the current element and what is 10 10 is nothing but the my list of 0 okay so i can't directly write it as my list of 0 right instead of that i'll write my list of position minus 1 here position is nothing but index that is nothing but 1 initially. So position minus 1 that is nothing but 0. So I will get my list of 0. Okay. So it will check current element with this. And I need another condition that is nothing but it should be always greater than 0. That is because we need a stopping condition for this while loop. So in the first stage we need to execute it only one time. In the second stage, we want it to execute it two times. Here, three times. Okay, so that's why this condition. Okay, so I'll explain you how this code actually works. Then you'll get to know if this condition is true. If the current element is less than the sorted part element, then what I need to do is I need to move this the greater element towards the right side here we can see when i get the current element is smaller than this sorted part element i need to move 25 this side right right side that's what i did here i'll insert this value in this position and i'll decrement this by one so here in this stage this value will be three okay so because we are uh, taking the value which is present in the index 3. So I'll check 1 is less than 25. True, right? So 25 will move right side. Now we need to check for this place. Okay. So that's why I'll in decrement position by 1 like this. Okay. So now if this condition become false, okay, if this condition become false, if the current element is greater than the sorted part element, then here I need to mention Okay, so if this condition become false, then leave that current value as it is. Okay, place that current value there itself. For example, here, I'll check whether 25 is less than 10. No, so I need to keep that in the same position, right? This is the current element now. I'll place it here itself. Okay, that's what we did here. So we are done with the function. So next, I need to take the input and I need to call the function, right? So here I'll just take directly list one. Next I'll call this insertion sort. And I'll print list one. Okay. So now if I save this and run this. Sorry, it is current element. Here we can see the elements in the ascending order. If 
if you want descending order then you need to change here okay if you change this symbol and if you execute this here we can see the elements in the descending order so you can take the user input also you can use the list comprehension method so now we'll see how this code actually works so first initially this will be executed first this line will be executed first because this is the function definition as i said this function definition will execute only when it is called okay so till now it is not called so first it will be executed okay list one is nothing but these values next here we can see the function call so control goes to this function and here we can see the list one so list one will be passed here here this name is my list okay so control will go to the function body for index in range 1 to length of my list here if i take my list as 2 4 3 5 1 so total length is 5 so here it will become 1 to 5 it will give output as 1 2 3 4 so first initially current element will be my list of index index value will be 1 so that is nothing but the 4 so position will become index that is nothing but 1 so next while loop will be executed it will check the current element that is nothing but 4 is less than my list position minus 1 position is nothing but 1 1 minus 1 0 so i'll so my list of 0 that is nothing but 2 so it will check whether 4 is less than 2 whether 4 is less than 2 no right so this condition become false okay so it won't check the next condition itself it will come out of this loop so here we can see it will execute this statement that is nothing but my list of position position is nothing but one current element so four will be inserted here so it will remain same we'll get two and four in the sorted part so again this for loop will be executed and index will be two now so current element will be three so position will be two so it will check whether current element that is nothing but three is less than four my list of position minus 1 position is 2 2 minus 1 1 so we'll get my list of 1 that is nothing but 4 it will check whether 3 is less than 4 true so it will check whether position is greater than 0 so position value is 2 right so it is greater than 0 so it will execute this while body my list of position that is nothing but my list of 2 is equal to my list of position minus 1 so that is nothing but it will move 4 here okay so 4 will come here 3 will be overridden by 4 next position will be decremented by 1 so position become 1 again while loop will be executed current element is nothing but 3 is less than my list position minus 1 so now position value is 1 1 minus 1 0 so it will check with this whether 3 is less than 2 no so it will come out of this while loop and it will execute this so it will place my list of position that is nothing but one okay so in this position it will place the current element that is nothing but three again for loop will be executed we got two three four now index will become three so current element will be five so it will execute like this and it will sort all the elements okay so this is about the insertion sort program so next many people have this confusion about the insertion sort algorithm and selection sort algorithm so insertion sort and selection sort algorithm are different in the selection sort what we'll do we'll find out the minimum or the maximum value first then we'll place that in the at the beginning of the list or the end of the list based on this ascending order or descending order right but in the insertion sort we'll take the first element as the sorted part and we'll take the element from the unsorted part one by one and we'll place that in the correct index so these are the difference between the insertion sort and selection sort algorithm so that is about the insertion sort algorithm and program that's it for now guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will meet you in next class till then take care